Uh, some technical barriers, Julia, breached this overnight, particularly on the 500. Uh, the pivot point uh, could be now upon us. What do you make of it? Carson, we were watching some important levels on the U.S. and overnight we did see a close above those levels. As you mentioned, for the S&P 500, we saw a close above 1,370 points and for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, managing a close above 13,000. 13,000 level is an important psychological level for the Dow and it was uh, stronger than expected consumer confidence numbers which did give the US market a boost. But for the ASX 200, the Australian market, we're looking at 4,282 points. Now this is a 200 day moving average. We briefly saw it breach last week but then we've seen a pullback uh, this week down 1% since um, we've actually touched that mark. Altogether, though, it does look like we may give that level a run for its money. We did see oil prices pulling back, and that should be a positive for markets. And, of course, long-term refinancing operations of the European Central Bank also expected to be a positive for the market. On the downside, though, we do see one of our heavyweights trading ex-dividend. Rio Tinto trades ex-dividend, as does Echo Entertainment and our Spark Infrastructure. And we'll be watching some important economic numbers coming out, especially the retail sales numbers at 11. Julia, is, is, is TPG now going elsewhere? Is it, is it all over? Or can we still believe there might be life in that bin? It looks like the uh, negotiations between Billabong and TPG have now hit a roadblock and that roadblock of course is founder and major shareholder holding uh, more than 14% and a letter being sent to the board uh, advising against due diligence even if an offer of $4 was made. Of course TPG had an offer of $3.30 on the table and a lot of analysts were predicting an offer of, uh, four of up to $4 but it does look like with some of the major shareholders really against an offer even at that four dollar mark tvg may have uh, really no choice in the matter so it does look like billabong shares we saw it coming under pressure yesterday trading below that three dollar mark as some of the probability of a takeover offer coming through disappeared from the stock we could see the stock once again coming under pressure that takeover premium slowly uh, coming out of that stock in that respect now the idea of food security but also you know assets that just cannot go into foreign hands because of a, a bigger picture sense of importance. Well, where are we at with this one? I guess this could become a political issue as well in terms of food security. The Goodman Fielder is uh, trading at very cheap multiples. It's trading off about 6.6 .6 times FY13 earnings. So looking quite cheap there. And the Australian uh, Financial Review with an article today talking about a possible $1.6 billion bid coming through from Wilma. Now, the market capitalization of Goodman Fielder is at $1.3 billion at the moment. Of course, Wilma is behind that 10.1% stake at 60 cents, which is a 16.5% premium to Monday's closing price. And if we have a look at Goodman Fielder's uh, business, it's mainly in Australia, New Zealand, as well as the Asia Pacific, deals in baking goods, as well as dairy, edible oils, um, and home ingredients. And it's a good fit with uh, Wilma's uh, business as well. Wilma's business, so in terms of uh, geography, is in different spaces in China, in India, Indonesia, and in Vietnam and Bangladesh. So it would be a very good fit there. Also, we know that Wilma is probably interested in the edible oils business, Integra, of Goodman Fielder. So it was a possible bidder for uh, that business as well. So Goodman Fielder, the shares rising very strongly yesterday on the back of Wilma taking that 10.1% stake and continued takeover speculation should help this stock today.